Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We are in chapter six, episode five, and this is our last lesson. So congratulations for making it this far. We're going to be doing spelling with S-S-C-E or S-E. So in Discovery, this is lesson 100. It is the very last lesson for Discovery. The ordering is a little bit different for Elevate. It's lesson 92. Um, so if you are following that sequence, it might be a little bit different. Anywho, we just want to make sure that you have everything that you need, something to write on, something to write with. And for review, we are going to look at a book, a little book. What are petroglyphs? We're only going to read the first seven pages of it. So we are... I'm not going to make it through the whole thing, but we will read it together. So Brittany's our student. Brittany, do you want to, um, you kind of lead, and then if you're at home watching, read along with Brittany? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. I'll just put my cursor here for each line, okay? Okay. Here we go. Many thousands of years ago, people recorded their history in stone. They did not use the alphabet. They carved pictures in caves and caverns. They carved pictures on canyon walls. They even carved pictures into huge boulders. Fascinating. Some say the pictures are a description of things people saw in their daily lives. They could be clues about how they traveled. They could be telling us where they hunted. They could even be a description of their religious rituals. Awesome. Pictures carved into stone are called petroglyphs. The word petroglyph comes from two Greek words. Petro means rock, glyph means symbol. Other terms for petroglyphs are rock art and rock writing. Awesome. We will read one last page. Petroglyphs are located all over the world. They can be found in North America, Europe, and Australia. They can also be found in places like the Middle East and Africa. They are extremely important to the history of civilization. The earliest petroglyphs found are from the Neolithic age. They show the existence of people that lived about 12,000 years ago. Awesome. If you are at home, I want you to be thinking about one interesting fact that you learned from reading this with us. Brittany, can you share an interesting fact? I thought it was interesting that they call it rock writing or rock art. Yes. Me too. I thought it was interesting that it, they're found in so many parts of the world, including North America. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. Whoops. I did not mean to do that. Let's move on to our next lesson. And we are um, learning when to spell with SS, CE, or SE. So when a word ends with a s sound, there are three different ways that you can spell it. The first is SS, and you already know this rule. We use SS when it follows a short vowel in a one syllable word. For example, boss, chess, and grass, 
are all one syllable with a short vowel. That's why they have double S. So that's something that you've already learned. Um, let's code this word together or prove this word together. So if we are gonna mark this, we would come under from left to right. I would see my CH digraph, put an X under my vowel E, come up and around and mark those S's as guardians. And what do guardians do? They keep the vowel short. So everyone, let's read this word together. Chess. Yeah. What's the word? Chess. Awesome. It is thought that chess originated in India. Fun fact. So when a word ends in, it can also take on the spelling of C-E. Again, this is something that you've already learned. Um, the E is going to be silent and it's going to make the vowel before it long. And then that C is also gonna form that rainbow S. So here's some examples of that. Face, spice, embrace. So these all have C, E. The E is always silent. The C, the C is making that rainbow S, that C, E combination. So you already have learned this part too. So let's prove this word together. So going left to right, what would we mark first, Brittany? I see an SP blend. You got it. And I see a vowel I. I also see a vowel E. I know English words that end in E, that E will be silent, so I'm gonna silence that E. And it's just one syllable, so we're gonna go back, to the, um, back around, um, and we notice that the E, is following the C, so we have a rainbow S pattern there, or bridge S. And then because we have the pattern vowel consonant E at the end of the word, the I is close enough to be influenced by the E to be long. You got it. So let's all read this word together. Spice. 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 Pepper was the most sought after spice during the Middle Ages. Interesting. So that rule applies all the time, except for in these four exceptions. There's only four exceptions when you would use an S-E instead of the C-E. So they are base, case, chase, and vase. That's the only four. In single syllable words? In single syllable words, yep. Good question. So, when the vowel, when a word ends with s, um, you can also use ce and not have the vowel be long. So, that's in words like dance, sentence, and since. Since there are two consonants now, between the vowel and that last E, the, the initial or first consonant and the C will act as guardians. So let me show you an example of this. This is the word sentence. So moving under from left to right, we see the vowel, E, then another E, and then another E. We go back to the first vowel, and we see that what comes after the vowels are two consonants, so we had to split them, right? Because one will run, two will split. So in this first syllable, we have a guardian making the vowel short, sen. Now we come over to the second syllable, moving under and coming up and around, we see the E at the end, we know that's silent. Then what do we call it when a C is followed by an E? Rainbow S or bridge S. You got it. And then now look, how many consonants are between the two vowels now? Two consonant sounds. You got it. So this rainbow S is acting as a consonant, the N, or sorry, as a guardian, the N is acting as a guardian. 
And that is why the E is not long. It actually takes on a schwa sound ever. However, so what's our, our word? Sentence. Sentence. So this is an example where C, E is used but the vowel preceding it is still short. Got it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So then we also have um, the sound being spelled as S-E. And this is when you have to decide whether it's going to be C-E or S-E because those two spellings are what you use when the sound follows an adjacent vowel, murmur diphthongs, or special vowel combinations. And there's no way to know the spelling, which spelling is used. So you're just gonna have to memorize the words. So first I'll show you some CE words. Remember, these are all following either adjacent vowels, murmured diphthongs, or special vowel combination. So here we have announce, choice, and peace. So let's look at this word choice. Moving left to right, we see our CH digraph. Then we have our special vowel sound, OI. So we'd put the X under both in Arkham. Then E is at the end, so we cross that out. Now again, C followed by an E is a? Rainbow S or bridge S. You got it. And we're not going to mark on top of that OI because it is a special vowel sound. So what is our word? Choice. Choice. You have the choice between vanilla or chocolate ice cream today. Awesome. And then here is just that um, same example, but with SE. So again, we would use SE in murmur diphthongs, special vowel sounds, or adjacent vowels, like in the word grease, house, or nurse. So here's the word grease, moving left to right. We'd arc the GR blend. We see EA. And then we have our E at the end. So we're gonna get rid of that E because it's silent. And if we keep going around, we see that adjacent vowel team. So the A is silent, the first E is long. So what is our word? Grease. Grease. There was grease coming out of the car. Grease. I'm gonna give you another word. Uh, because I want you to know that often when S-E is at the end of the word, it's actually going to make the Z sound, like in this word, please. So to prove this word, I would go under, I'd mark the P-L blend, vowel E, vowel A, and then vowel E, they're all getting an X under it. E's at the end, so I cross it out. I'm still going around the word. I see that the adjacent vowel team, so the A is silent, the E is long. So let's read this word. First, let's try it by making this sound. Police. Police. Is that a word? No, but police is, but police is not. Yeah, exactly. So now let's try putting that Z sound there. Now let's read it again. Please. 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 Can you please pass the ketchup? Is that a word? It is. You got it. So just know that when S E is at the end, often it will make the Z sound. So let's practice with dictation now. And I'm actually going to stop sharing. So you're going to need your, uh, something to write on, something to write with. So the first is going to follow that first rule of double S, the San Francisco Zoo rule. It is brass, brass. Brass, brass. 
Do you know what the brass instruments are? Brass. Fabulous. Brittany, can you walk us through? Yes. So I was, I heard a short vowel sound and the word ending in s. And so I knew it was going, and it was a single syllable. So I knew that it was going to have double S's. So BR is arced, the X under the vowel A. There are two guardian consonants up here proving the vowel to be short. So the word is brass. Awesome. Everybody, let's put our finger under brass and read it two times. Brass. Yeah. Brass. Fabulous. Okay, here's our next word. I want you to write the word pace, pace. Pace, pace. You have to pace yourself when you run a mile so you don't get too tired. Pace. Awesome. You can look at Brittany's or mine. Brittany, can you walk us through this one? Absolutely. All right. As I go across the bottom of this word from left to right, I see a vowel A first. I'm going to put an X underneath it, a vowel E, the X under that. Um, going up and around the word because it is just one syllable, we're going to silence that E because when an English word ends in E, it's going to be silent. Uh, we have uh, the E is also following right after a C, so we have a rainbow S or a bridge S, so I'll mark that. And then because we have the pattern vowel consonant E, the A will be long because it's close enough to that E to be influenced by it. And the word is awesome, Joe. Awesome. Okay, let's do another one. We've already done this one together. Please, please. Please. Please, please be nice to your siblings. Awesome. Before you tell us how you did this, I want to know why did you choose the spelling S-E here, Brittany? Um, because it's following an, an adjacent vowel and also I knew that it ended in S-E because I've memorized that that pattern is what follows the word please. Mm -hmm. um, and when it makes the Z sound, can yes, it be spelled C-E? No, it can't. It has to be S-E for the Z. So walk us through how you did this, now that we know why you did the spelling. As I go across the bottom of this word, I see a PL blend. I see a vowel E and a vowel A and a vowel E. So I'll put X's under all of those vowels. I'm going up and around the word. I know E ending of English word is going to be silent, so I marked that. And then I saw the adjacent vowels team, so I mark the second vowel silent, the first vowel long. And then again, when we say the word please, it's not please. So I put a Z above the S to show that. And that's why it says please. Awesome. Okay, let's do another one. How about, I'm gonna give you this one. It's a two syllable word, here it comes. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Surprise! Everyone shouted when it was the birthday party. Outstanding. Tell us what you did here. All right. As I went across the bottom of the word from left to right, I saw a vowel U followed immediately by an R. So it's a murmur diff song. I arc those together. I saw a PR blend next, arc that. And then I saw a vowel I put an X, vowel E put an X, 
Um, I noticed there's more than one working vowel in this word, so I know it's going to be multi-syllable. You also told us it was going to be more than one syllable. So let's go back to the beginning of the word to decide where our syllable splits happen. In between my vowel sound U R and my vowel I, I have one or one unit, so one unit will run with the next syllable. So I split right after the murmur diphthong. And that's fully proven because the murmur diphthong is neither long nor short. So it says sir in the first syllable. My second syllable has a silent E at the end. So I mark that. And then I have the pattern vowel consonant E. So I put that I there, a long vowel sound above that I. And when I say the word surprise, I don't say surprise. I say surprise with this sound at the end. So I put that little Z above the S as well. And that's why this word says surprise. Absolutely. Excellent. All right, here's our last word. Prince, prince. Prince, prince. Now listen to my sentence. Prince is a musician from Minnesota. Prince. Awesome. First things first, I noticed we both used an uppercase P. Why do we do that? Because Prince was a name of a band uh, or a musician, so we wanted to make sure it was a proper noun. You got it. Okay, now tell us how you proved it and why. All right, as I go across the bottom of this word, I have a PR blend. I'm going to arc that. I have a vowel I, put an X under that. I have a vowel E, put an X under that. E at the end of a word is going to be silent, so I silence through there. It's only one syllable. I have a CE pattern at the end of the word, so I have that rainbow S or bridge S. And I do have two consonants in between my E and my I. So those are going to be two guardian consonants, which would prove the vowel short instead of long. So I have the word prince. Awesome. All right, we're going to play the eraser game real quick. So before you erase, you have to read it. I want you to find the word that follows the San Francisco Zoo rule. Read it two times, everybody. Brass. 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 You can erase brass. I want you to find the word that is two syllables. And what is the murmur diphthong in that word? You are. Got it. So let's read that one two times. Surprise. 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 Can you raise? Find the word that rhymes with face. Let's read it two times. Pace. 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 I want you to find the word that's a proper noun. Let's read it two times. Prince. 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 And what is our last word? Please. Awesome. I want you to think of one interesting thing you can say about that word. Um, it has the z sound at the end, so it's spelled S-E at the end of the word. That's the exact same thing I was thinking. Outstanding. Thank you. Okay, we are going to move on to transfer. Let me put on my laser pointer so we can read this together. So here we go. Brass. Trace. Intro. Deuce. Lettuce. Awesome. Remember, if you're at home watching, you should be reading out loud with us. Pace. Surprise. Spice. Erase. Pleasure. Close. Please. Sorry. Amuse. Fleece. Fitness. 
grace, choice, surpass, course, prince, compose, rose, instance. Fabulous. Now we're going to do the sentences. Will you please teach me how to play chess? Awesome. There was not a trace left of the broken vase. Hmm. What do you think that means in that sentence? What are you visualizing in your brain when it says there was not a trace left? Um, that the broken vase was cleaned up all the way. Awesome. Let's read the second one. Or sorry, the third sentence. The prince and princess will dance at the ball. Fabulous. And what do you think ball means in this sentence? Um, an event to dance at. <laughs> Fabulous. The principal was or has a surprise that she will announce during the assembly. Fabulous. Any predictions on what that surprise would be? Uh, it depends on what kind of assembly it was. <laughs> it could I be anything. Know. Maybe um, maybe they got pies in the face or something like that. We've done a, I've done a, um, an assembly like that before where we threw pies in this principal's face after we earned a lot of um, minutes for reading. <laughs> That's what I was envisioning too. A lot of um, assemblies are around reading. Mm -hmm. So before we move on, we're going to read one more. Are going to read the book Fossils. And if you are at home, you are reading out loud with Brittany. So here we go. A fossil is evidence that different kinds of animal and plant life existed on Earth. Fossils are remains such as leaves, bones, or grass. They can even be pieces of hair that have been preserved in rock. Ooh, new learning for me. I never thought of hair being a fossil. Me either. Something produced by an animal that hardens into stone is called a trace fossil. A footprint in stone is a trace fossil. Most fossils found today are extinct plants and animals. They lived in wilderness areas a long time ago. Awesome. The purpose of this passage is to teach you how to make your own fossil. My advice is to choose the right place to make your fossil before you begin. There is a good chance that you will make a mess in the process. Make sure you are working on a surface that can be easily cleaned. Once you have found the right workspace, just follow these directions. How to make your own fossil. You will need a mixing bowl, measuring cups, a big spoon, and wax paper. A collection of fossils to imprint into the stone dough you can use things like twigs and sturdy leaves. You can use clean chicken bones or seashells. You can even use a toy dinosaur. Let's pause right here. Okay. 
a collection of fossils to imprint into the stone dough. You can use things like twigs and sturdy leaves. You can use clean chicken bones or seashells. You can even use a toy dinosaur. The ingredients to make fossil dough. One half cup salt, two cups flour, three fourths cup cold coffee. This makes the fossil look old and dirty. Directions. Measure the salt, flour, and coffee. Put them into the mixing bowl. Stir them together until they are well mixed. Dump the dough onto a large sheet of waxed paper. Then knead it more than twice with your hands until it is smooth. Hmm. Break off a piece large enough to make an imprint. Roll it into a ball. Then use the heel of your hand to flatten it out. Press the object for the fossil into the dough. Gently remove the object. It will leave an impression in the dough. Let your fossil dry overnight. Once the fossil has dried, you can surprise and amuse your friends. You can take your fossil to school. You can share it with your class. They will praise you for how much you know about the science of fossils. The end. Awesome. Let's just quick. This passage teaches how to find the best fossils, make your own fossil, make money selling fossils, make your own fossil. Make your own fossil. A fossil is evidence of cavemen and their lifestyles. The kinds of food dinosaurs ate and when. Different kinds of plant and animal life that lived long ago. Different kinds of plant and animal life that lived long ago. Different kinds of which of the following is not an imprint? Tire tracks in the mud. A balloon that is being blown up. A design stamped into a leather belt. A balloon that is being blown up. A balloon that is be true or false. It would be easy to make an imprint of a real school bus. True. Oh. False. False. Why do you think it's false? Because a school bus is very large and it would be hard to make your own imprint of that. <laughs> I was thinking. This. Which of the following would be evidence that your brother ate your chocolate cake? A picture of the cake. Chocolate all over the dog's face. Chocolate all over his mouth and hands. Chocolate all over his mouth Chocolate and hands. Chocolate all over his... I hope you enjoyed the story. Here are the results to the questions you answered. Nice work. I hope you are playing along if you are watching from home. Before we go, I just want to share with you, um, this is the practice page, spelling with S-S-C-E and S-E. It's the last practice page. We're so happy you made it this far. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and uh, let us know. Standing work, students. Keep up the good work. All right, that's it. Have a good day. You too. Thanks, Jillian. Thank you. Bye. Bye.